your worst neighbor ever story. Story one, when living with my dad in a duplex, the downstairs neighbor was a family of, I think eight people in a two BR house. They were all on pills, sat on the porch 24 seven. None of them had a job, frequently had police because of fights. Oh, and they bred chihuahuas, so constant sound of dogs barking and yelping. At the same time, the neighbors on the same floor as us, very thin walls, was a family of three where the two kids constantly fought for whose turn it was on the Xbox. I could hear them cow talking people over the mic all the time. One time I put my guitar amp against the wall on full volume. I usually play unplugged or with headphones because volume at two shakes the floors. They were a quiet for a little bit, but it never stopped. So glad I moved out. Story two. The old lady who lived across to us decided to become an opera singer and sang to her plants almost daily from 7 a.m. to around noon and from 6-ish p.m. until like 3 a.m. And I'm talking full-blown practically all day every day. It made things like sleeping hard and caused my S.O. enough stress to trigger her depression. She got the cops called on her twice. The first time she sang to the officer's face and closed the door. They had to break in and take her away, but she returned the next day. The second time a senior officer cursed at her while the younger guy tried to hold his laughter. I bonded with one of my neighbors over our shared hatred towards this loud bad person. I think he lived above her. Oof. In addition, the middle-aged guy who lived below us was worse. He would yell and curse about practically any sound we made in the apartment, even when a t-shirt fell from the edge to the floor. And this was an old house, so we had really creak-happy floors. And this wasn't all. He would also have episodes where he would bark randomly, even in the middle of the night. This was a weekly occurrence. We lived there for four years. Story three. We've had loads of bad neighbors after leaving uni. Most recently, the guy downstairs somehow managed to lock himself inside his flat and was trying to get out all night. He was throwing all his furniture and plates, etc., out the window because he thought that would help. He repeatedly knocked on the ceiling, thinking we could help him out, but there was nothing wrong with his door. And even if we could help, he kept us up for hours. And it wasn't the first time he's done something similar. He's an alcoholic, but I swear he was on acid. Story 4. I live in an apartment, and the balcony is a decent size, but the one side is a wall that goes about 3-4 up, and the other side is your next-door neighbor's balcony. So a couple move in, they're maybe 20, and she's pregnant. She would sit on the balcony all day, almost every day, talking loudly on her cell phone or chatting with a friend. That becomes annoying very quickly, so my balcony door would often have to be closed. She would go inside in the evening, just in time for her boyfriend to sit on the balcony smoking candy for hours. Sometimes it was just him. Sometimes they would be having a party. It lead to never being able to have the balcony door open, which sucks because it gets stuffy. The baby was born, and the behavior continued until we had to threaten to call CPS on them, and then the partying and candy magically stopped. They had a second baby, and the first one would scream her brains out all the oh-no time, which we could hear through the wall while the mom was on the balcony chatting on her phone still. They were pretty nightmarish until they finally moved out. Story 5. A couple that were meth cooks, sellers, and consumers. Domestic abuse. Dog poured water and on their balcony, which of course fell to our patio through the wood slats which my cat stepped in and tracked on my carpet. Both of them got arrested on multiple occasions, constantly having cops knock on our door to ask for info on the couple. Of course, the leasing office did nothing about it, but we were able to get out of our lease and move to a different building. We can still see undercover cops watching them, but luckily I am at a distance now. Meth, not even once. Story 6. Had a neighbor that thought all of the surrounding land was his. His plot was pretty small. But he thought that if he mowed my lawn every day that he had legal ownership of it. And he drafted up some papers saying that the city was giving him ownership of my land, which my lawyer quickly pointed out was not only nonsense, but was also fraud. Then he would do things like jump in my car and broke the clutch so he can push into the alley and have it towed so he could park his vehicles there. Him and his wife called the city multiple times to get my own vehicles towed off my property while pretending to be super nice to us which is why Iowan passive aggressiveness is extremely annoying. So I called a tow company to come pick it up and bring it to a mechanic. But they thought they were successful in getting it towed off the property, so they started celebrating until the car showed up next week and they were arrested. Story 7. I bought my first house last November. The neighborhood was a mix of nice young families and some questionable people. Some yards were very nice. Others looked like they hadn't taken care of the property or mowed in years. The neighborhood sat on the edge of a very nice suburb of the city. Backyard was beautiful. Large shed, privacy trees on both sides, and a seven-foot privacy fence in the back. In the beginning of summer, my girlfriend and I had put up those backyard lights that went from the tall trees across the backyard and connected to the shed. We had met zero neighbors at this point. I had installed back deck speakers also to enjoy with friend and family. So as I get home one day, one row of the hanging lights were 
We noticed also he had put wood beams on top of my fence posts, so we couldn't tie our light strings on the top of the fence. So I am in the house while my girlfriend is in the shed after we found this, and she comes running in. The neighbor was screaming over the fence. He didn't know who he was screaming at. He was just screaming, saying things such as, You think I'm afraid of you? And I will put you ten feet in the sky, and just cursing. So she comes and gets me, and at that point I had bad day. Mind you, we have never seen this person, nor can you see over the fence, or can he see us. Have never even been in contact him, just threatening us. So I come out of the house and I start screaming, Hey, is there a problem? Over and over with a very stern voice. No response. So I decide to go over there to be nice and say, Hey, if I am doing something wrong, then please tell me. Well, behind the door, I hear him say, If I have to open this door, I will terminate you. Fifteen minutes later, he is back at it again. I hear him this time and he sounds drunk. Hi, whatever it was, he was toasted. He is now, threatening that I will terminate you over there. I am not scared. By this time, it has been going on for two hours. I did not respond to him this time because I don't know who this guy is, what he looks like, or what he is capable of, and he is not quitting. I have never called the cops in my life, but I am not about buy my first house and have problems with neighbors. I don't know what triggered this man. Was he just bored and messed up up? Did he have a problem with the previous owners? So I called the cops and said they will send someone. This is a Monday evening now at about 11 p.m. He is still yelling and the cops are not there. He then gets very personal and says, you, as in me, your wife, your dog and daughter, I am going to terminate you all. So now this is real. I call the cops back and say someone needs to get here ASAP. -y. So the cops come and they can't really do anything and I tell them the story. So they go over there and I see them from the second story, surround the house and hear them knock. These people shut the lights off in the house. Now comes the police knock where they are not messing around. You could hear it echo throughout the neighborhood. So they go in and are there for about 15 minutes. Then we see the cops leave and one comes back to my house. I am repeating word for word what this cop said to me. He says, they will not be bothering you again. These people are inbred piece of. I stood there for a minute thinking about this comment and I say, really? He says, I'm not kidding one bit. He then proceeds to tell us that they have been to this house hundreds of times over the past decades. They are known candy addicts, alcoholics. Their sons would rob the neighborhood. There have been numerous overdoses and a death two years ago. They have a 50-year-old daughter who has Down syndrome that they left roam around the neighborhood. The cop also said that they had no wall on the back of their house. It was just a tarp, and that the inside was growing and grass, and that the roof was caving in. It was uninhabitable. So I questioned how can they live there and afford it and no be kicked out. I guess this house has been owned by this family for generations. So ever since then, no problems. But it was disappointing that now I have to watch myself in my own backyard because of this unpredictable psycho. Story 8. My neighbor currently. My girlfriend and I moved into our currently house two years ago. It's a full three-bedroom house, 1,600 square feet, for $750 a month. The only reason I'm mentioning this is because it's a steal for the area, hence why we haven't moved to solve our neighbor problem. Now to the neighbor, Peg, she's a mid-60-year-old lady, hermit alcoholic. No one in the neighborhood actually enjoys her. She's miserable, always has a problem with one thing or another, but is the first to start neighborhood drama. Anyways, as we are moving, there was a few things I just carried from the old apartment to this current house. It's only a stone throws away, quite literally, less than a block. So our first encounter with Peg. I'm walking through our yard, combined backyard at the time, to bring some stuff in with my dog. She comes out and says, oh, you have a dog? I don't like dogs, proceeds to go back inside. She would periodically pop her head out and say some snarky remark about God knows what as we're moving in. Next issue was I was driving through our side of the yard to unload some of the heavier stuff, washer, dryer, fridge, etc., she had three audacity to come out in an uproar, saying to stop driving on the grass you're ruining my property. Like I said, we have a split yard, but I don't have to cross the property line to get from the road to my door. A few weeks go by and nothing. Our dog is really well trained. We had him trained to stay off her side of the yard within two days off leash. One day as I'm outside with him, she comes out expecting some scolding or something. She actually does her first nice thing for us. You can let your dog run the full yard. I don't use the yard for anything. I'm rarely out here. Thanks all the grass in the full yard if you'll continue letting him run. Fast forward a few months, haven't really heard from her much. It's now winter. A bad winter. Shoveled snow from our on-street parking spot, and she would take them not offering tickets help shovel out another for our car. Then if someone took the spot was in, she walked around the neighborhood knocking on doors to scream at whoever car was there and make them move. We made it a weekly routine to remove the dog's waste from the whole yard at least once a week. M in the warmer weather. Between the cold and the snow, we didn't do it as much. When it warmed up and the snow finally melted, we received a letter in the mail almost instantly from her brother, some type of lawyer. The landlord also received a copy of this. 
By this time, we're great friends with the landlord, and she basically tells us to ignore that crabby bad person. Anyways, the letter says, Along the lines of legal action will be taken if the waste isn't removed, and if we continue to let our dog run at large, nothing ever came of it. We're going into our first spring at this place about a year living here. She now decides she's going to cause problems any time the dog is outside and start parking out back to check for dog waste on her side of the yard, which is no longer there because we have since retrained our dog to not go over there. Rinse and repeat everything started about for the next year. Until we get to April of this year, we had asked the landlord for a fence, to which they agreed after they settled some stuff. We offered to buy it if she was okay with it going up, or help install it, or help pay for it. Basically, anything we can to get a fence up. So like I said, April is here, the landlord calls and sets up a date to get a fence up. It's nothing crazy, just a small chicken wire type fencing, but it works great and keeps the dogs in. As we're setting the fence up, she comes out and is acting offended. What brought the fence on? Was it something I did? You know your dogs are okay on the yard, right? I ignore it, and so does the landlord. Fence is up only slight issue, is there's about three feet of our property on her side of the fence. Okay, whatever all the grass like normal and just go to the other to finish it quick. About two weeks later, we see Peg outside measuring from our fence to the fence on the neighbors on her other side. We don't think much of it. Then, out of nowhere, about a week later, she is hooking a fence up from our fence to the other neighbor's fence. Fine, I don't care, or so I thought. The next time I see her, she proceeds to tell me, I know I blocked in your property with my fence, but I told Chris, a uh, her grass, to not your three feet of grass, but I'll allow you come on my property to come it. That's the last that has happened, but I'm sure there'll be more. Didn't realize how long this got. She just boils my blood. TL Dr. Bad Neighbor for two years, many different things. House is a steal, that's why we didn't move. Story 9. The town I live in has a lot of people with boundary issues. My last place was downtown, and the place had this long back patio space that stretched behind three units. I was the far end. No reason for anyone to cross through my side. The middle guy had two dogs that he let cow all over my side. He didn't pick it up all winter. It doesn't snow here. So my SO piled the cow up on the guy's back door. These dogs barked outside our window at 8 a.m. Dude worked from home, so we blared death metal in the morning when we were in class. We didn't feel bad. He was the only one we shared a wall with. Second person who moved in had a lot of boyfriends. One was a fat frat boy who puked on our back doorstep. We gave him a water and he scooped up his puke with his bare hands. Her last boyfriend was an unemployed white rapper, so we had to hear that all the time. The last tenant that caused us to move had a little girl. Downtown loft, literally surrounded by three bars and one restaurant. But the baby daddy would come over and they would come and chill on our patio furniture right in front of our windows. If they stayed on their side, they wouldn't be able to get a good angle to see inside. But the patio furniture was prime oogling space. Story 10. I lived in an apartment with a morbidly obese downstairs neighbor, which is important later. She was always poking into our business, lived with my wife, then GF at the time. Well, one time my wife was out of town and I had my friend over, male. We were watching a movie and drinking, observe and report, and she texted my wife that she thought I had some girls over while she was out of town. Luckily, my wife thought it was funny. On to the incident. We were home one Saturday and in the middle of the afternoon, we heard like a minute of screaming from downstairs. She lived alone, preceded by an extremely large bang. We were genuinely concerned since she lived alone, so I went downstairs to knock on her door. No answers. I waited a few minutes, knocked again, called through the door that we heard screaming and just wanted to know if she was all right or needed any help. Still no answer. So knowing she lived alone and was obese, we were concerned she either was attacked or had some sort of heart problem. So I called 911, talked to the operator, told her everything, and she agreed they would send a cop over just to check. Cop came, knocked on the door windows, no answer. Her car was in the driveway, so they called the fire department, knocked on the door windows. Finally, they called out that they were coming in and taking the door off the hinges. Now, I was there for all of this, and it was not a large apartment. They were banging on the door loudly, windows, everything, and were very clear about the fact that they were coming in. And this wasn't five minutes. This was all over the course of about an hour. Fire department takes the door off, gets inside, and she comes out in a towel. They explain what happened. She gets mad. Says she was in the shower and didn't hear them or me. Nonsense. And starts yelling at them to get out of her apartment. Cops asked about the screaming, and she just said she was blowing off some steam. Fire department left shaking their heads, told me this happens all the time, and I did the right thing. I was so annoyed she was not only a bad neighbor, but a terrible human being as well. Story 11. Worst neighbors I've ever had just moved out a month ago. Our apartments are townhomes. The backyard is technically shared, but people keep things on their side of the lawn. Pretty standard if you ask me. Well, upon moving in, we very quickly discover that we have no backyard. What we have between our attached garages is what I can only describe as a dog-cow minefield. 
Five and six inch logs of slowly decomposing dog cow covered the yard from side wall to side wall. Okay, I thought. Let's make it clear we want to use our lawn furniture. We set out our lawn table and chairs on the small slab next to our AC unit. None of these things are big. The table itself is maybe 16 inches in diameter. It's nothing more than a place to put a drink. Nothing. No change after a couple days. So we see them outside a couple days later and say, Hey, when you get a minute, can you clean up your dog waste? We'd like to put our lawn stuff out. Their response? It's not our yard, it's on your side. You pick it up. It came from your dog. At this point, I should point out that I do have a dog, but she's a Shiba Inu, and in no way capable of producing the thunderous dumps that blanketed my backyard. So, with their attitude known, I went to the property manager and left a complaint. That's when they started putting their dog cow on our sidewalk and doormat. They also started throwing their trash in our garbage cans and recycling can. The recycling crew yelled at me several times for putting garbage in the wrong can. And the truth of it was that the only thing I had ever put in it was Powerade Zero bottles. I caught the guy in the act and ran outside to take the bag out of my can while he was still there. He refused to talk to me, and his wife kept trying to play me for a fool, not knowing that I'd seen him walk out their door straight to my garbage can and put their nonsense in it. She then gave me a sob story about how she hadn't been able to plant flowers that year because of all the trash and dog cow. The day they were gone was probably one of the best days at our current place. Story 12. My neighbor used to let her dogs, Siberian Huskies, run loose. Even after one ran out into the street and was hit by a car, we lived in a pretty busy city, she still refused to put them on a leash. One day, one of her dogs got into my house and terminated my cat. My neighbor didn't do or say anything until about a week later when I happened to bump into her on the street. She asked very casually how I was doing, and I said I was still pretty upset over what happened. Her response? She shrugged and said, yeah, sorry about that, and then continued on her way. I don't think I spoke to her again after that. Story 13. Our neighbors a few years ago. Husband lost his job, ended up living a horrible trailer park. Our neighbors had a pit bull they used to fight. We saw them using wound cleaner on this dog with visible neck wounds and scarring. It actually came after and tried to terminate our dog who we were walking in our yard. Then there was the night they were watching prohibited photos with their front door wide open so you could see everything. Another incident, they had some kid who was probably no bigger than two almost fall into a charcoal grill because they weren't watching. Finally, they got into a huge drunken argument, and one of them knocked our street sign over with a car at 2 a.m. Friday nights guaranteed the cops would come. Landlords lived in our community but did not care as long as they got their rent. They couldn't be bothered by all the garbage going on. Most of the people in our park were pretty scary people. That was seven months of absolute hell, and I'm beyond grateful my husband found a great job in a different state. And we got to start over with some very awesome neighbors we have now. Story 14. I grew up in a trailer, so our front yard was the neighbor's backyard. This was also back in the days of clay litter. So we had to dump all the litter in the trash once in a while and rinse the litter boxes out and let them dry before refilling with fresh litter. Not my favorite chore by any means, but my parents told me to do it, so I did. Neighbor comes out one time, yelling that I can't do that. I sassed back that I had just as much right to be there as she did. She yelled that I was a horrible kid and that she was going to tell my parents that I was rude to her. I told her to go right ahead. It's not like I want to be cleaning the stupid litter box. I told my parents about the interaction afterward and the neighbor never said anything to them. A couple weeks later, my cat was dead. My parents found out from friends who worked at the local grocery store that worst neighbor ever had bought rat poison recently. Again, this was a trailer park. If she had had rats, then we would have had rats. Not proof enough to take her to court, though. Edit. To clarify, we did not have rats, so she didn't either. Story 15. My husband and I lived in small, albeit quite nice, apartment building in Manhattan for a year before getting married. It was our first apartment together. Our next door neighbor moved in shortly after. He seemed like a nice guy, but he played his music very loud, and we were always a little suspicious because he was renting a three-bedroom apartment in Chelsea by himself, but never seemed to work. And he had strange guests over at all hours. We didn't think too much about it until true weirdos started appearing in the building. For example, we came home from dinner one night, and there was a guy in the lobby taking to himself, not wearing pants or underwear. The building had a doorman, but he only worked business hours. Another uncomfortable moment was when we came home to find the area outside of his apartment, a few feet from ours, was covered in trash with a random guy tweaking who asked if we could help him get into the apartment. Our building had terrible management and ignored our complaints. One night around 3 a.m., we were woken up by a loud BAM! 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 outside our door. We were terrified. It's the police! Open your door! Now! Through our peephole, we could see the police using a battering ram to break down our neighbor's door. They ultimately pulled him out with two other guys, one of them puking. We later found out our neighbor was a candy dealer. 
Now we live in the suburbs where it's safe and quiet with neighbors who are old and sweet. We couldn't be happier. Story 16. I wouldn't say the worst, but I would say the creepiest. While living in Los Angeles, I was staying in a nice area called Miracle Mile, and most of the residents there are fairly young. I stayed in an apartment complex that had two floors. My apartment was on the second floor and I had a neighbor under me. My girlfriend at the time lived in Oregon. She came to visit for the first time for a week, and we had many conversations and a lot of fun in the apartment. One day, while walking out of my apartment, we heard someone downstairs leaving as well. We make our way to the staircase, and once we get down to the bottom floor, my neighbor that lives directly under me says hello. Mind you, this is my first encounter with her after living there for seven months. So she says, hey, I'm also from Oregon. My girlfriend and I look at each other puzzled to know how she knows that. She then says, how was your dinner date last night at Jones? At this point, we're like, was she hiding in the apartment? We had a small chat and we left. After that day, she would randomly come up to my apartment and ask random questions about my girlfriend and I. Towards the end of my lease, I would hear her screaming and acting a little off. I would see her out in the neighborhood with messy, wild hair and smeared lipstick on her face and teeth. Weirdest neighbor I've ever had. Story 17. I used to live in a terrible part of the city that I lovingly referred to as the corner of crack and pipe. Our building was a two-story ancient thing that had been broken into apartments. In one section was this guy I'll call Frank. Frank was maybe in his late 50s and seemed a bit off when I first met him. But then again, so was nearly everyone in this section of town. Once he told me he was an ex-pilot, but I can't tell if this was true. One day, I noticed a huge handmade cardboard sign propped up on the sidewalk. It read, Free Beer for Lovely Ladies, and had an arrow pointing to an open door that led to his place. Obviously, no lovely ladies took him up on his offer. As time wore on, the sign was joined by a number of odd things he was trying to sell. Cheap plastic kids' toys, cardboard signs from bars downtown, usually ones that had beer logos or bikini models on, lawn furniture, and the like. Turns out Frank was going around at night, stealing things off local lawns and trying to make a living from it. The local police knew about this. When the pile got too big to ignore, they'd threaten to arrest him and he'd return the stuff. He'd lie low until he felt the need to make more cash and the impromptu hot yard sale would return. Frank was getting more and more erratic. Three times in a row, he would snarl at me that I was a bad person, then suddenly in the same rant change tack and ask if I had a boyfriend. And if not, was I looking for one? I mean, literally, he'd go from how I was one of the reasons Western civilization was going to candy, then in the same breath try to entice me with his charming ways. I wasn't the only one he asked this question or in this manner. Again, this sales tactic wasn't successful. He never hit or grabbed at anyone, so the local cops, of course, did nothing. Frank routinely would put a steak, his words, on to cook, then forget it was there and or fall asleep. The breathe alarm went off constantly. I can only imagine what the inside of his apartment looked like after that many rounds of smoky kitchen nightmares. One night I woke up to hear what sounded like glass breaking. It was so loud and close I thought someone had smashed my windows, but they were fine. I looked outside, but because of the direction my windows were facing, I didn't see anything. The next day I went outside to go shopping. I didn't go, however, because the sidewalk was littered with splattery blood patches. There was also a huge amount of broken cups and plates all about the intersection. While I was gawking, a neighbor lady saw me and came running out to give me an update. Frank had decided to smash all his kitchen supplies in the road last night and had himself pretty badly doing it. As we talked here came Frank. He'd bound up his leg badly with some kind of fabric and was still bleeding profusely. He then sat down on the curb and cheerfully commented to us how nice the weather was. Both of us decided not to engage and scurried back inside. I called 911. The ambulance showed up, then the police. Frank heard the ambulance siren, scrambled back inside, and barricaded himself in his apartment. We could hear him yelling that he wouldn't go to the hospital because that's where they put microchips in him. Finally, because he was a danger to himself, and possibly a health hazard because of the blood trail he left everywhere, the cops popped the door lock and managed to talk him into going along, probably sedated. Frank was later released, and mercifully I moved shortly after that. I have no idea what happened to him, just... If you see a cardboard sign that says you can get free beer if you happen to be a lovely lady, don't. For the love of God, take up that offer. Story 18. We had neighbors that got kicked out of a bad area and moved next to us. Council house. Family with teenage kids? Both parents were gaming the system for disability. Wheelchairs that only got used when they went out despite waking fine in the garden to the car, etc. when they thought no one was watching. My dad has the eye fury they both claimed, so I do get the symptoms in this case and had a lot of time to notice the inconsistencies. Huge amount of noise all the time at daft times. Can't remember why, but we got back one day and the sun came up, got in my face, and ended up threatening to stab me while I was getting a small child out of the car. I am 6'3", and this guy is like 5'10", so he couldn't actually get up in my face like he was trying to very well. 
Got the kid safe, as that was my primary concern, went inside and called the police. Turned out when they arrived next door had called the police before us. They turned up thinking I had threatened him. Turned out they knew this guy had a record. Not for stabbing people, though, apparently, but left it as if I pressed charges they would, too. Which was not something I wanted to be involved with, really, as I didn't have any involvement with police other than having my bike snicked years AGI. Two weeks later, the house on the corner got raided for dealing candy. I am hundreds of miles away now. Yay! Story 19. I lived in a nice-ish condo community in San Diego in college, and the head of the HOA was this grumpy older fudge with nothing better to do than sit around waiting for a noise. I lived two doors down from him, and a couple of my friends lived next door to him with a common wall. The other complainer was the lady who lived alone in her condo and walked her cat on a leash. He would complain that my friends were cooking too loudly, walking at night and opening cabinets after nine. For me, he complained that my car was too loud, Mustang with high-flow mufflers, and that it would wake him up whenever I started it. My roommate had the same year Mustang with the same exhaust, but mine was the problem. They also complained that mine emitted harmful fumes, had all the emissions controls intact and functional, because it was loud. Then he complained that I started my car at 630 a.m. and woke him up by shaking his walls. Mind you, he was four units in from the end, and my car was on the street. My roommate, whose window was right above my car, with his window open, slept through it. There were at least four other cars in the complex that I counted that were as loud or louder than mine that went through at all times of day and night. To top it off, the complex is in a busy intersection less than half a mile from Interstate 5. I'm pretty sure he just sat up all night waiting for me to start my car so he could complain. He was a single older man who never had anyone over, so I'm sure he did that to pass the time. A while later, my car had been hit. He claimed my car woke him up on a date that it had been in the shop and I had been out of town. This was perfect for me because it proved he had been harassing me the whole time. Story 20. Lived in rental house in a suburb on the east side of the bay near San Jose for a couple. Apparently, the previous tenants had been dealers of some sort, judging by the clientele who would arrive at odd hours, confused as to why we were there instead of the last tenant. So this is that kind of neighborhood. You know, typical low-middle-class Cali suburbia, where my poor little rental house would have cost upwards of $700K had I been looking to buy it. Anyway... Diagonally across the street lived a bunch of wannabe bangers who would party all the time and have car stereo bass contests far into the early morning hours. One time I had to go over there and ask them to please turn it down as it was nearing 2 a.m. and all my windows were rattling. This was on Christmas Eve, BTW. They turned out to be super polite to me, which I guess was a point in their favor. I also witnessed SWAT circling their house, with guns drawn, on two separate occasions, never found out why or what the result was. That's an interesting thing to suddenly notice when you look out your living room window. Eventually, they moved away and the house sat vacant for at least a year before I moved away from there. I can't even tell you how many times I would go out for a breathe at night in my backyard only to be temporarily lit up by a circling police helicopter. I'd always just stand there and wave because I figured the last thing I want to do was run inside. Between the constant police presence, the trespassing recycling gypsies, and the earthquakes, I think San Jose gave me PTSD. Story 21 I actually answered a similar question on here a few days ago, and this will probably get buried, but I found it cathartic to write it out before. I had just moved to a new state by myself at the age of 22. My dad, who lives three hours away from my new place, helped with everything. While he was moving me in, we met my next-door neighbors, an elderly couple in their 60s. They seemed nice, especially the wife. They took down my phone number and told me to call if I needed anything. Nice people, I thought. A few weeks later, I'm outside, and the man invites me over for dinner later that week, promising his wife's lasagna. I agree somewhat reluctantly because I'm a bit of an introvert, but they seem so nice and mention missing their kids who don't come around so often. I show up on time and knock, the man answers. I ask where his wife is and he tells me, oh, she's in Florida, visiting her sister. Okay, that's weird and definitely doesn't sound like the dinner I signed up for. I ask if it was unexpected, the visit. He says no. I mentioned that he had said we would be having her lasagna, so I had assumed it was a dinner with both of them. He gets kind of flustered and says, She forgot to make it before she left. I was planning on us to have what she was supposed to leave in the fridge. Okay. Definitely feeling like I was asked here under false pretenses. But maybe he doesn't like it when she's gone and just wanted to have company for dinner? I don't know. I'm uncomfortable, though. I don't know this man, and my family and friends are hours away. Dinner is a day-old pizza he pulls out of the fridge, and he seems much more interested in opening one of the three bottles of wine he's got out on the counter. He offers me a glass, and at first I refuse, but he re eely insists. I agree to be polite. I go to sit at the dining room table and try to start talking casually about the area, asking for tips on places to visit, etc. He says, oh, let's be friends. No need to sit at the table. 
Let's go into the living room. At first, he sits across from me in a different chair. Eventually, he moves to the couch where I was fidgeting, clearly uncomfortable. He continues moving closer and changing my attempts at small talk to weird and personal topics, asking me about my partying in college, prying about men in my life, etc., all while trying to refill my glass. I'm not drinking what he pours, but he keeps pouring it higher and higher until it's at the brim of the oh-no glass. Eventually, I say, sorry, I'm not a drinker, and I don't plan on having any. He almost pouts. My alarm bells are going off like crazy, and I just want to bolt. I keep saying that I have to go. Something has come up with a friend. But when I stand to go, he calls me back each time and says, you agreed to have dinner. Your friend can wait. Plus, you've just moved here. Who can already be so important? I'm basically almost paralyzed at this point. I need to get out of there. And my brain is going a million miles a second planning an escape and dealing with the weird feeling of still wanting to be polite. He tells me to loosen up. And then he comes over and proceeds to start rubbing my shoulders. I'm in full-out panic now. I flinch away, pull out my phone, and say in a dead voice, I have to leave right now. IDK what did it? But he let me go at that point. He tried keeping up with me as I nearly ran out of the room. He met me at the door and said he was sorry I couldn't stay longer. And then, he somehow casually slipped in a reminder that he and his wife had a spare key to my house. If I ever locked myself out, the person who had lived there before me had given them one and used to have them cat and house sit. I ran home and just... bawled. I was mad at myself for getting myself into a scary situation like that. I was furious at how stupidly committed to being polite I was. And I was scared. I called the only somewhat friend I had at that point, a guy I had met at my graduate school, and asked him to stay on my couch for the night. He very kindly agreed. He's also my boyfriend now and lives with me lol. And then I called my dad in the morning, and he drove three hours to change every single lock on the house. When I see my neighbor outside now, he avoids eye contact. I haven't spoken to him or his wife since. Story 22. He complained that the dogs were running by the wooden fence and it was causing dirt from our yard to get into his yard and wanted us to rake our dirt back so it didn't happen again. He would get upset at us for climbing the trees in our yard that overlooked his yard. The dirt thing was slightly crazy, but that was honestly the worst issue from any neighbor. And he talked to my dad about it like an adult. As an adult, I understand the tree thing. Story 23. Had a hoarder next door. The bugs she brought were bad enough. But she was old and forgetful and on more than one occasion put food on the stove and just left. Breathe would billow from her apartment and I would have to call the fire department so they could race there to kick in her door and stop things before she burned down the building. She liked to hoard newspapers, among other things, so her apartment was a damned tinderbox. On top of that, there was the sheer weirdness of when her family would come and remove everything from her house while she stood, staring at the dumpster. Much of the stuff they would carry to the trash I would recognize as something I had thrown out sometimes even years earlier. To top it off, she was rude as hell about it. If you asked her to please, please, please let the exterminators into her apartment, it would be one thing if she had been a sweet old lady with a bad problem she acknowledged and apologized for. But she was downright mean if you asked her to open her apartment up to pest control to try to keep the monster roaches at bay. Story 24. I don't know who the worst neighbor ever was. I know they my cat in the peach with a BB gun, though. I was petting my Billy Kitty, a wonderful indoor-outdoor cat who was only about five years old at the time. She would live to be 23, when I felt something weird on one of her thighs. It was hard and round, and it seemed to move. So Billy went to the vet and got surgery. It was a BB. I still get pissed off just thinking about that. Who shoots a cat with a BB gun? Here's the thing. Billy wasn't feral. She didn't steal food. She wasn't obnoxious. She went out of her way to hide. She wasn't one of those ballsy cats who would march into a stranger's home like she owned the place and ask for food. She was a sneaky cat. So, you know that what would you ask God question that pops up sometimes? I'd ask him who the fudge my cat and what he's going to do about it. Story 25. Growing up, there was a big Mormon family across the street. At first, they just kept trying to convert us. But as I got older, I noticed the men paying me more attention, especially since puberty hit me like a truck. At barely 12, I could easily pass for a 16-year-old with balls and in peach. Every time I saw one of the men, they had some kind of comment, mostly about my chest. The sons, who were at least four or five years older than me, often asked if I stuffed and wanted to feel them to prove I didn't. Of course, I never gave them any answer and just ran home. Luckily, we moved right before I turned 18 because I've heard the horror stories about that religion. Story 26. Kathy was a former downstairs neighbor of mine who was a devotee of paganism, though she always called herself a witch. She had a bunch of occult stuff in her apartment, would wish people happy Samhain during Halloween, often dressed in, etc. This didn't really bother me because who cares what crazy people want to believe? My small Midwest county has a population of just over 30,000 people, 
yet contains well over a hundred goddamn churches. So what's another crazy belief among so many others? I only mentioned the witch stuff to drive home how flighty she was. Kathy started out as a very friendly and considerate neighbor. She was constantly engaging members of my household in warm conversation. If either of my kids disappeared while doing laundry, invariably they were in her apartment after having been invited in for cookies or other baked goods. She even used to give my daughter her unwanted designer clothes. Both were very petite and roughly the same body type despite my daughter being in middle school. In return, I convinced my father, who owned the building, to allow her to have a dog in her unit, despite it being against the lease. We'd had a lot of pet damage over the years, and it's just easier to not allow animals, period. Overall, she acted like a neighbor anyone would want to have. Unfortunately, this didn't last. As mentioned, my father owns the apartment house we live in, and one day he called to ask why Kathy was complaining about me on Facebook. He said she was complaining about how noisy we were, always thumping the floors or playing our television or video games too loudly, and she couldn't get any sleep. Needless to say, I was gobsmacked because at no point did she ever say anything to us. We saw each other all the time, so I would have expected her to say something if we were disturbing her. Having lived in her unit myself for 10 years, I knew full well how annoying it was having loud, inconsiderate people above me. So I had always been careful to chide my children if they ever thumped the floor or otherwise caused too much noise. Perplexed, I went downstairs to ask her what the problem was. Kathy wasn't in her unit, but I could hear her in the other downstairs apartment occupied at the time by a single guy about my age. I knocked on his door, he opened it, and sure enough, there was my complaining neighbor relaxing comfortably on his couch. I knew the two of them were very friendly. Despite having an out-of-state boyfriend, Kathy spent a worrying amount of time alone with the guy downstairs. It really wasn't any of my business, though. I told Kathy how I'd learned she'd been complaining about me on Facebook, and I apologized if we were being too loud, even though I really didn't feel we were, and asked her to please say something to me in the future if we were disturbing her. She in turn apologized and explained that, here's the kicker, she had recently started some new medication which A, made it hard for her to sleep and B, made her extra sensitive to noise. While I didn't say anything, in the back of my mind I was like, well, then why in the hell are you complaining about my family being too noisy when it's your sweets that are causing the problems? But to maintain a good relationship, I let it go. I went back upstairs and told my kids we needed to be extra quiet from now on, and to stay out of the kitchen at night because it was directly above Kathy's bedroom. This was just to be safe, so as not to thump the floors if she was trying to sleep. About a week later, she started complaining on Facebook again about us being too noisy. In fact, her posts became extremely insulting. Now to be fair, I am a huge, fat, illegitimate child, and my wife is overweight. But Kathy really harped on about our weight, and how we were so fat she was afraid we were going to crash through the floor and crush her. She even called my very sweet, quiet wife a cow. She even attacked our parenting, saying how poor we were because we made our kids do chores around the house, like cooking, cleaning, and laundry. Again, this was only about a week since the two of us had a friendly chat, where she all but admitted her prescription suites were the problem. I called my father and explained the situation to him, and told him I didn't know what else to do. Fortunately, not only did he believe me, but Kathy's insults convinced him she wasn't worth the hassle, and didn't care if she moved out or not. Eventually, I responded to her posts on Facebook not only reminding her how she told me all about the medication she was on, but also pointing out how she was spending all that time with the guy downstairs despite having a boyfriend. We had several Facebook rows back and forth like this until eventually she broke her lease by moving out without giving us the required notice. She also left the unit dirty, so we kept her security deposit. A couple months later, Kathy filed a small claims lawsuit against my father, alleging emotional damages from how terrible I'd been to her and how we'd illegally kept her deposit. This was ridiculous because A, anything I said was reacting to nonsense she had said and B, the building is in my father's name and I don't legally have anything to do with it. Technically, I'm just another tenant. Our lawyer laughed when he saw the filing and sent Kathy a friendly letter warning her that if attorney fees started racking up, she'd be on the hook to pay them when she inevitably lost the case. She didn't even bother showing up for the first hearing and we won by default, which means not only did she lose her $500 security deposit for breaking her lease, she was also out another dollar one hundred she had to pay for the filing fee. Technically, we could have countersued her at that point for the attorney fees we'd already accrued, but we decided to let it drop and to just get on with our lives. The last I ever saw of Kathy was a photo that showed up in my Facebook feed of her dog, a white poodle that she had taken to a groomer to be completely dyed a myriad of garish colors. The poor thing looked like someone puked a box full of Lucky Charms all over it. Yeah, she's that kind of poor person.